All right, so this is a f this is one example where motion graphics, quote unquote, is being generated economically. Can we go back? So that's one case study, and we'll go a little bit into the depth of here. And this is the other one. If you don't understand everything right now, it's OK. But this basically demonstrates the state of the e-learning it was before. It was just a simple list of links to screencasts. So the existing content are Camtasia recordings of PowerPoint slide decks with annotations on them, which is good. Annotations make it more engaging. But that was not enough. So Prezi is being used in two different ways. One, as a menu to the modules. So people can get a mind map of the topic and the various branches of the topics. And from within this Prezi mind map, they can navigate to the videos. And the second application of Prezi was, the video starts off with that same mind map zooming in to the specific topic of that module. And again, we'll go into a little bit of depth in here later. This is just to give you a preview of what's coming up in this session. All right. So first case study. Let me start this again. I'm going to mute this so we can go here frame by frame. So the challenge was uh, the U.S. Department of Ag Agriculture a few years ago replaced the food pyramid. Everyone familiar with the food pyramid? How many of you can use the food pyramid? It was terribly hard to use. Nobody could use it. And, uh, that's why it was replaced with something called MyClick. Anyone familiar with MyClick? Yeah. And basically it said, you know, balance out proteins. Uh, a little bit of dairy, you have your carbs, and then you have half of your plate to be greens and vegetables and fruits. And School of Public Health wanted to do, uh, wanted to participate in a challenge by creating a 30 to 60 second video. And we got into the challenge really late. So we had 24 hours to produce a video, which would be engaging, hopefully with some elements, some moving elements. And the key principle is that visual information, we saw a lot of other submissions, and it was a lot of talking heads, people demonstrating. Those were good. But they were going way beyond the 60 second mark. And we knew that uh, having a talking head video all the time is not the best thing. Visual information is processed faster than text. That's why we thought we would either go fully visual because we did not have any time to do any narration. We had 24 hours to turn this around. So we decided to combine Prezi and PowerPoint and do a screencast. So is everyone comfortable capturing screen videos? Does anyone, is, does anyone need a little bit of an introduction to screencasting? Yes? All right, so I'll talk a little bit. Screencasting, basically recording your computer screen with or without narration to demonstrate steps. So 
It can be used to demonstrate software, how software is being used, or to record your presentations or materials. So that is screencast. And then, of course, you can stream it out live, or you can record and have it available. So does that explain screencasting? Any other definitions of screencasting? For this, you use Camtasia. For this, we use Camtasia. In general, is that the default software? Camtasia is one very popular software on campus. Any others? I know a few, but I'd like Camp to. Camp Studio. Camp Studio, it's that's the free one. Camtasia. Yeah. Camp Studio is a free one on Windows, right? Yeah. I think that's Jing. So Jing is also a product of the same company that produces Camtasia. But it's free. It'll, it won't do full editing, but it'll do great short videos. And you can buy Jing Professional. You can buy it. Yeah. And, and get some more features. Does the university have a full license to Camtasia that anybody, any university people can use? I don't think we have an agreement with Excellence like that. So it's department by department. Right. There is an agreement with the uh, College of Pharmacy and some other partners like School of Public Health for another product called Relay. For what? Relay. And, and that is another product from the same company that creates Camtasia. And this is a server-based, sort of client-server model that you have a small application on multiple computers all around. And then anyone can go record a screencast. It publishes automatically to your course site or wherever you want it to get published. So if you're interested in a uh, centralized solution, uh, pharmacy as a partnership. Can you record screens with Google Hangouts? Yes. So some people use Google Hangouts. What are some other popular? ScreenFlow is very popular as a paid application on Max. But one, one called Zoom. Zoom I'm not it's a, it's a clone of a Google Hangout. Ah. It's free you can have twenty five people. Okay. Excellent. My favorite way to capture screens if I don't have Camtasia is QuickTime Pro on the Mac. Because QuickTime Pro or QuickTime on Mac lets you record the screen and narrate it's not, it doesn't have all the screencasting functions. But I hope this was a useful diversion to just get everyone familiar with screencasting because it's essential to both these cases that I talked about. All right. So what happened here? Let's, let's see this video. Let's mute it. So let's guess, what was this portion produced using? PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Don't rule out the simple stuff. PowerPoint can help you. And that's why you need to imagine what you want to do. Storyboard it. You don't have to do a full visual storyboard. But in your mind, first think of what you want to show, and then decide how you're going to do it. So some portions are better addressed by more simpler solutions. This starts off with PowerPoint. And then it cuts to Prezi. So Prezi gives you the ability, which PowerPoint doesn't have, which are, which are zooming, panning, contextual view, big picture view, detailed view. So those are the things Prezi is good at. And it's really hard to duplicate that in PowerPoint. Then we click, uh, switch over to a flip cam video that we did in 15, 20 minutes. And, and again, this was helpful because we knew what we wanted first. And then getting to the easiest way to get to it. So again, a little bit of Prezi there. Back to PowerPoint with Flipcam video. All 
PowerPoint again. And that's the end of that. It was really hard. The shorter, it's just like writing a short story is much harder than writing a novel. Uh, creating a short video, a good short video, is harder than creating a long video. So how, how much time did that take? We had 24 hours. We didn't have anything more. So we did whatever we could in 24 hours, including sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> how did you create the storyboard? Pen and paper. Pen and paper? We, want, we first came up with the key frames. We want to show this, we want to show this, we want to show this, we want to show this. And then we go back and say, how do we do this? And that helped a lot. So when you're getting some uh, slide in from PowerPoint, we have transitions, it, it translates into Brazil as well. Right. Anything that you see on your computer can be captured by the screen capture software. So the one that you created on PowerPoint, you captured on the screen and then put it in so we are using PowerPoint's own animations there. So that's why cap so what you see is what you get and that's helped by screencasting software. You capture you like keep track of the metadata, like how fast the transitions are happening and stuff like that. So if you want to go back and recreate part of it, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Well, the uh, editing software file, so in this case, I think the editing software that was used was probably Premiere Pro. I don't remember now. But you obviously keep the PowerPoint file. The, the generate, I mean, the source file. So, yeah, yeah the, the source, source file for the PowerPoint, so that if you want to go back and say, well, that image wasn't quite right, we got to change that image. Sure. sure, sure. You can go back and recreate it from that without having to. Absolutely. First rule of video editing, Never delete anything. Right, right. Never delete anything. You're all deleting. Keep everything. All right. So so we've seen this video twice. Um, does it give you a good idea of how different media and how different software is combined? Are there any gaps in the understanding? So you could tell us how to get that video or not? Because I, what I didn't understand mm -hmm. is, yes, you've gotten it on Streamcast, but how do you get it into Brazil? By the insert uh, function, or is it something else that you do for Streamcasting? Is it how does this? So once you have your final video, Prezi allows you to bring in right. videos from YouTube. Yeah. So you bring in your final product into Prezi, um, and that's a relatively simple. Just there was one thing that I was never clear on. It's like when you bring in content from outside from the net, does it only link or does it capture actual content? Because I know it has that Google function where you can actually right. go in. So does it bring in the actual content or is it just a link? So like in the future, if there's like a broken link, you're kind of screwed. Right. Absolutely. So uh, it does embed the YouTube video directly okay. into the Prezi. So I think that's a good point to demonstrate. It's an option, though. Yes. Uh, so let me go into a Prezi, a test Prezi. It's going to share it online. Right, exactly. Yeah, one thing to keep in mind is you have to have an internet connection to show that it has the video. And if you, uh, and I guess most of you have adumish.edu accounts, you can ask Prezi to give you a slightly better version, a slightly better access. Uh, it's not their full pro access, but it's better than the free account you can get with an edu email address. You can say, I'm an educator, I'm associated with this educational institution, can you upgrade me for free? So they'll give what you access. You get a few extra things. I think the ability to maintain more Prezi's, I'm not clear on what extra yeah, you have. I think more storage space, more Prezi's. It doesn't have the Prezi logo on every presentation, and you can use them in better logo of your choice. So it's quite like basically. Limited space. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Gabriel.
Yeah, and also the ability to set your presentations to private. That's something else mm -hmm. So it'd be uh, like a list of them. Yes. So I highly recommend doing that as a follow-up. Get a educational account rather than just a free account. So I probably can't do it with my alumni sign up. As long as you have a .edu, yeah. Yeah. as I told you. It's not your consulting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That and I think the customer service person is present. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, um, I'll quickly demonstrate how a finished video is embedded into Prezi alongside other media. So, here's the video. I can grab the link, copy from the browser. Here's a blank Prezi that I'm editing. So, insert, you can insert a whole bunch of things. Paste the YouTube link. And that comes into the pressing. Let's see. Zoom out. So when you're presenting stuff using Prezi, when your focus goes to that media, you can play it back. The first Prezi that I showed. Well, the first Prezi that I showed is a video on YouTube. It's not a Prezi. It's a screencast of the process. Right. Right. So the outcome that you get, the first example. So that's public, right? Right. So, so this I is. I wanted to show somebody that. Right. Uh, it is on the School of Public Health's website, and I guess. USDA challenge. Maybe as a follow-up, I'll send out links to all the videos that I'm sharing. And I'll share that with you guys. Yeah. Cool. Have a question. So every time you see a video there, you embedded a video in PowerPoint. No, I I uh, used a picture-in-picture -picture function in the video editing software. You could have it in PowerPoint. I'm not sure if that would give you the best frame rate. So you, just to clarify, so you can you actually technically you kind of capture twice because you captured the PowerPoint and you captured the Prezi, then you put it into the video editing software and create the video. Right. Uh, Let me skip ahead. So here's a little video. So the background is PowerPoint. So that's a still, unless it it had some moving parts. No, it's not. So the background was captured by running PowerPoint and then bring in the flip cam video, the churn picture insert in a video editing software. So you could have actually put this storyboard in Prezi to start with. Put it off to the side. Sure. Absolutely. And just have that embedded with your thing and just not refer to it. Right. But our final output in this was not packaged in Prezi. It was supposed to be a YouTube video. Right. So, in terms of keeping everything together, that would be a way to... Absolutely. Prezi is... And, and that's the strength of Prezi, to even visualize your workflow as you are creating. You're, you're working in a big picture and detailed format. So even preparing your presentation, Prezi, is better than PowerPoint.